of changes that need to happen aren't something that you can do one hour every two weeks and expect fast enough progress to help these kids. This program and programs like it, they may be incredibly expensive, but the research is clear, it is still significantly cheaper than kids coming into custody, and that's if you only count the financial cost. When you think about the trauma of being taken from your family, even if you're lucky enough to be put into a foster situation that is healthy, and we know that's not the case for everybody, but even if you are lucky enough to get that, you are still talking about intensive trauma being taken from your family, and then if reunification happens, that's a whole other trauma in and of itself. It is an expensive model. There's no doubt about it. Having one therapist work with two families at a time, uh, that's an expensive model. It is a lot cheaper than inpatient, um, but I also think we're looking at the PIE, person and environment. The therapist is able to go, is able to see their environment and see, is this a healthy environment? What can I do to make the environment more healthy? Uh, and then how can I guide this uh, family that I'm working with through to get them to the other side of sobriety? The long-term gains are you're looking at reduced involvement with police, with um, hospitalizations, with the Department of Children's Services, with the criminal justice system. So it's, it's pulling them back from a lot of those services that are hard to quantify. It is expensive. And I think part of the expense is because we aren't just treating one piece of the person. We are really treating an environment and a context. Um, and I think that actually is kind of the justification for the expense because what we gain from that um, is that we really are, again, setting a foundation for people to be successful so they don't have to engage in the system again, or maybe with the same intensity. So the cost savings associated with preventing, again, out-of-home placement, from preventing um, substantiated maltreatment, from preventing families from going back into sort of the substance abuse space, I think is valuable. You're not only impacting the mother, you're impacting her children, the family. It's a whole unit and all the, the people that impacts. Without funding for programs like this, there are so many kids that will go through the cracks. I went to a training two years ago. One of the things that stood out to me was talking about how many millions of kids in America are being negatively impacted by parental substance use who will never meet the threshold of abuse or neglect. So even if we take aside all the abuse and neglect and you're just thinking about these kids, that's three kids in every classroom. And that's where programs like TIES, not only can we help the ones where abuse and neglect are happening, but we can also find those gaps for these three kids in every classroom that aren't getting services from anyone. A little more indirectly, I think a value in that is it requires that all of these systems work together and that takes some investment. Um, but having all of these different providers, having all of these different agencies really interact with one another um, and learn to build those inroads and communication strategies really is not only a foundation for this program, but for a found, is a foundation for lots of other services that we have to provide, thinking about how we make that collaboration more stable, really deepen those relationships is, is valuable. It is important because it works. The research is clear. The research we did with TIES, the research you can go right now and look at on the National Family Preservation Network, IFPS, you can go and look and the research is clear, programs like this work. It is a difficult population. When you are dealing with substance abusing parents, um, it, it's a difficult population. You've got the substance abuse that you're sort of trying to deal with. You have parenting and neglect issues that you're dealing with. Simultaneously, you've got to deal with all of the attachment issues. Um, that every single member of the family has. That's not something I can recreate in an office setting, no matter how fantastic I may be today or how fantastic I may be 30 years from now, you cannot recreate that in, in an office setting anywhere. You cannot recreate that in a community behavioral health center anywhere. It, having it in the home, having it intensive so you can get past all the barriers and join with the family is a way to make change happen.